In this Ableton live tutorial, we're going to be looking at send and return channels. We're going to be looking at groups or busing. And then we're going to be looking at parallel effects. So the first thing that we'll look at is the send and the return effect channels. Okay, so if we press tab and we look at the arrangement view, you can see that I've got MIDI channels here, audio channels here, and then I've got a reverb channel here and B delay channel here. So A and B are next to the master. And these are send or return channels. That's how Ableton calls them. They call them return tracks, okay? So uh, if we come over here and we look at um, these buttons here and we look down in the left-hand corner, we've got um, the tooltip showing us what these are. So this is the send, okay? So on this audio channel, we have the ability to send audio to a return channel, okay? So in this example, we would be sending audio from the fourth audio channel into reverb. So that um, send is referring to that channel. And another way that we can um, see what it is that we're referring to is if we bring the automation up and then we click on this um, icon here and it's letting us know that first of all this button belongs in the mixer and its control is referring to the A reverb return channel. If I click on the second send for that one audio channel then you can see that the second send is referring to the B delay. So what does that actually mean? What would that actually be doing? So I'm just going to turn the automation off and that window is going to go away. So let's say we take an audio sample. So let's go to the Leon switch um, sample pack. And let's just find... I want to find something very quickly that's just... Um, Sometimes insane. Okay, that'll be fine. It's sometimes insane. So I'm going to drop it on the start here. I'm going to click on it. I'm just going to press Z. Um, uh, why is that not working? Uh, because I had the computer um, keyboard turned on. So I press Z just to full screen that, okay? And I'm just going to go Control L to loop it, right? So I've got that. Sometimes insane. Audio sample looping around uh, and... At the moment, the way that the channels inside of Ableton are working is this audio is coming into the channel and then it's going uh, from this channel into the master channel and at the master channel, it would be added together with all of these other audio channels, right? That's what we would call summing. So the, they are digitally summed together, added together, and then they come out the master channel. So that's relatively simple. Just basically goes straight from here, down to the master, out to the speakers. But if we start introducing um, a, a, if we start sending audio to a return channel, what we're doing is we're still sending this audio exactly as it is straight to the master, but we're also taking a copy of that audio and we're sending it to this second channel, the reverb channel. Or I could send it to both the channels. I could send this audio to as many return channels as I would be able to load into Ableton. So if I um, start pulling this up, you'll see that it goes all the way to zero decibels and all the way down to negative infinity. So I can send a certain amount of this audio between zero and negative infinity. I can send that into the reverb channel to be affected by whatever's on that reverb channel. So if there's a reverb on it, then it'll get affected by the reverb. If I turn the reverb off and solo the reverb channel, sometimes insane. you would just hear the audio sample, but a bit quieter. So if I turned it all the way up, sometimes insane. you hear it in full volume. If I turn it all the way down, you don't hear it at all. It doesn't even come in, right? So it's sending simply a copy onto this channel and it just so happens that Ableton automatically loads in a reverb for the send. So what we can do is we can turn the reverb on, 
we could put it on high quality and we could send all of the audio into that reverb and we could solo it and just listen to what it sounds like. Okay, so we're getting a completely wet signal feeding into um, the master. So the way that this is working is if I unsolo it, I've got one copy of the audio going straight to the master and that's clean. It doesn't have any effects on it. It just comes out straight as it sounds. Then I'm sending 100% of that signal to the reverb send and on that reverb send, 100% of that signal is then getting affected by this reverb because it's set to 100%. Here you can see the dry wits 100%. So any audio that comes in here is going to get affected completely by this reverb. And when we're using return channels, that's typically what you'd want to do if you're using a reverb or a delay. You would send, you would pick the ratio here. So how much of that signal do I want to be affected by reverb? So let's say I want it to be negative 18 decibels of that signal is coming into this reverb channel. Let's see what that sounds like. And we're going to be hearing them together, okay? So sometimes insane. Okay, cool. What if we put it up to say negative 10? Sometimes insane. Cool. So you're hearing quite a bit of reverb on that. And we can get that balance to how we like. So why is this relevant? Why would you send audio from one channel to another to be affected? So let me give you another example. If I had a channel where I had 50 different tracks all playing, and I wanted to put reverb, say, on 30 of those channels. I would need 30 reverb units on each channel that I want to reverb on. And that's not a very effective way of putting effects on things. It would be very intensive for my CPU up here. My computer would struggle to run it. So instead, if it was the same character of reverb that I wanted on everything, I could set that up as a return channel, and then I can send all of the different uh, instruments that I wanted into the same reverb unit. So I've got one reverb processing all of that audio and doing all of the work. But you may say to me, Andrew, what if we don't want all of the same reverb? Well, in that case, you would either do it something like this. Let's say we've got reverb, reverb short, right? So that's a short reverb. If I go ahead and insert another return, um, I'll delete the delay, I'll go reverb, so I'll go rev mid, right? Rev short, and then if I go another one, rev long, okay? So I could have different uh, reverb units with different lengths, so I could grab this first reverb, copy, come over here, paste, and set that to say a, a, a medium sized reverb. Maybe this should be a bit shorter. So let's go down to like there, that can be around three. And then I'll copy that and paste it into long. And we'll say that could be like, oh, let's go 12. Okay. And then you can send different effects if into different reverbs, and then they'll have different reverbs applied, but we're still only using three reverbs in total rather than 30 all on the different channels. Okay, so that is send and return. And you can do this, you can let your mind go wherever you want. So for example, don't just stop with the reverb, you can EQ it, so you could take the lows out of the reverb. Um, so if I go and send all of that reverb to the long one, Sometimes insane. I can EQ the reverb uh, so that it's not muddy. Sometimes insane. I can take out some Sometimes of the highs. Insane. Um, I could even put, you know, effects on it. I could put delays on it. I could put a whole effects chain on this. So it doesn't have to just be reverb. That's just a great example. So, for example, let's add another reverb, uh, another um, return channel. We'll call this delay. And then we'll come over here and we'll grab a ping pong delay. We'll turn that off so it's not going into the reverb. We just want to hear it going into the delay. Sometimes in the same. So the reverb is not happening on this channel. That's happening here. And then again, okay, well, there's low end coming through. Sometimes in sync. Sometimes in sync. Okay, well, maybe we want to do something very creative. We go to filter. We put a bandpass on. We put some resonance. And then we tell it to LFO. And we want it to do it at a rate of um, a half note. Sometimes in sync. Sometimes in sync. 
So now we're creating effects chains on return channels, okay? And you can send multiple different effects into that. So that is sends and returns inside of Ableton. Now let's have a look at groups and how groups work. So when I was talking about the routing, I said that this channel would go straight to the master just by itself. Now that I'm using a return channel, it's going to go straight to the master and then a copy of it's going into this return channel. It's getting delayed, EQ'd and then filtered and then it's going to the master and then it's getting added together with that original sound. So that is not going essentially straight to the master, right? Now, if I do a, even, uh, if I take it even further, I could have um, both these audio channels and I could go control G to group them. And that's group, group one, right? Audio one, audio two. And we'll just delete these MIDI channels just to keep it simple. All right. So now what's happening? This is no longer going straight to the master. It's still going to the return channel and it's still going to end up getting added together at the master and coming to our ears. But now this has another step. This audio channel will be added together with this audio channel because they're part of the same group. So they will be added together at the group first. On the group, I could then put effects to affect both of the samples uh, inside these channels, right? So now I could say, all right, let's go ahead and grab, um, let's grab a drum pattern. So a loop, drum, cool. We'll grab that and we'll drop that here. Sometimes in sync, sometimes in sync. Sometimes insane. So I'm turn that down. Sometimes so insane. Don't have so much of that coming through. Sometimes insane. And maybe we'll grab both of them and just pull them down a little bit so we're not clipping. Sometimes insane. Sometimes insane. Okay, so then we could come into audio effects and we could put, I don't know, let's say a beat repeat. I've never done that before. Sometimes insane. Sometimes insane. Sometimes insane. Okay, and it's affecting both of these. So they're. Audio is feeding into the group. The group is being affected. It's coming out the other end together. And then that's going to the master. And then it's being added together with the delay. Okay. So that is audio routing. And we can go ahead and put whatever sort of effects on this group. And we can affect both of those tracks together. Then what we could do is we could say um, audio three. Audio four. Okay. Okay. And then we group them and we go group two. Okay. So now we've got another group and imagine there's audio on there and it's doing the same thing, but then I can click group two and group three. Okay. So let me explain this first. That audio and that audio is getting added together at group two and then it's going to the master. That is happening exactly the same. But then if I group these two channels and go rename master group, um, uh, master group okay whatever um now what's happening is that audio and that audio is getting added together in that group same happening here but then that audio from the group two and group one is then getting added together inside of group master group and then that master group is going to the master and getting added together with return channels okay so now you understand grouping and bussing inside of Ableton and how it works. Groups within groups, grouping, and how the audio chains work. So one final thing that I'm going to show you is even more meta than that. So let's come back over to this sample. Okay, I'm just going to, for the sake of this, I'm going to turn the beat repeat off. And I'm not going to let it go to that send channel anymore. I just want that audio by itself. Sometimes in sync. I've got it solo. Sometimes in sync. So I'm just going to hear that. Sometimes in sync. I'm going to grab an audio effect rack. I'm going to drop it on top of that vocal. I'm going to open up the chain selector. So at the moment, there's not a chain in there. So if I press play, sometimes in sync. Audio comes in here, comes out here. Nothing ha happens, right? I right click here, create a chain. Press spacebar. Sometimes in sync. Exactly the same thing, right? Except now I can see there's a chain and I could 
kill the volume and I could stop it coming out the end. Or I could pan it, I could turn it off, I could solo it, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what happens if I go and I add another chain? Now what I've done is I've got copy one of the audio. Now I've made a second copy of the audio. And if I press spacebar, and so if I turn that copy off and play it. Sometimes insane. Turn that copy on and play it. Sometimes insane. It's louder, right? Because it's exactly the same and they're adding together. No worries. So what I'm showing you here is a way where you can do parallel processing of the sound inside the audio track itself, okay? So we could grab a frequency shifter and we could drop it on copy two. We could push it up like so. Sometimes in sync. Um, sometimes in sync. 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 And then maybe we could grab a flanger as well. Why not? Sometimes in sync. Sometimes in Sometimes in sync. Sometimes cool, and we're making an effect that parallels the dry signal. So this one's dry, no effect on it. Sometimes in it just sounds normal. And then we're adding a copy to it, or we're parallel processing it, so we're adding extra stuff on it. And then what we could do is we could mix it in in volume, right? So right now it's giving us all of what this is. Right? We're hearing all of it. But let's say, okay, negative 10 decibels is a good mix of the clean signal, the dry signal, versus now this wet signal. So let's have a listen. Sometimes in sync. Sometimes in sync. Okay, maybe we want to make take it even further. So let's get a simple delay. Um, let's go ahead and sync it, and we'll set that to one millisecond. We'll set that to twenty-seven. We'll turn the feedback up. Sometimes in sync. Cool. It's giving it an, a metallic effect. And now we add them together. Sometimes in sync. Sometimes in sync. And we could then go even further. So we could say that utility goes on there. And what we're going to do is we are going to send that all the way to the... We're going to take the left signal and we're going to turn it all the way left, right? I'm going to duplicate that to make a copy of it. So now there's two... Now there's three copies... And I'm going to take the right hand channel and send it all the way to the right. Okay? Now how does it sound? Sometimes in sync. Sometimes in sync. Sometimes in sync. So now I've got stereo spread plus these effects. Right, so that is parallel processing inside of Ableton as well, using an audio effect rack. I hope this video was really helpful for you guys. It's a bunch of features in one video, so hopefully it's not too much, hopefully it's not com too confusing, and hopefully this video wasn't too long. I really enjoyed making this video. I'll see you guys soon in another one.